Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your internet shop teacher, and this is tips number 824, all about cleaning and servicing a three-jaw scroll chuck. I did a recent video, number 822, where I did the same thing with four-jaw chucks, but today we'll talk about, again, scroll chucks. This six inch chuck is probably the one that I use the most often here in the basement. It has an inch and a half by eight thread. Now this came with my atlas lathe, but it is not marked in any way. So I'm not exactly sure who made it. But with these chucks, you'll get swarf and chips and all kinds of debris in the scroll. And it causes the jaws to bind up and wear rapidly so you should take them apart periodically and clean them. If you can't take them apart, uh, well, just blow them out, although that often blasts the chips farther into the scroll. So let's take this one apart. Okay, I'll start by quickly removing the jaws. The battery just gave out. Did you hear that? Time for a recharge. That's the first time my drill ever went dead while I was on the ground. Normally they die when I'm up on a ladder. And now to remove the six screws on the back side. Now I've already loosened these. They were quite tight. Anytime you disassemble something that is precision, use a soft hammer. Never use a steel hammer. So we've got plastic, brass, lead, rubber, and all of that. This three-jaw chuck has only one hole for the chuck key. So there's really no need for a witness mark as I disassemble this. But if your three-jaw chuck has three places to put the chuck key in, you really need a witness mark so that you reassemble it the same way you took it apart. This is a piece of scrap brass, about 3 8 diameter, so I'm going to tap right on the scroll to separate it, hopefully. You see it's starting to open a little bit. And I'll just work my way around until it separates. This is a brass wedge. Look at all the chips that fell out of here already. That was quite a bit harder to get apart than I thought it would be. And again, look at all the chips here. Wow. So this is what we have here. A little bevel gear that'll take out. Now if you have that other type of chuck I just showed you with three of these, you'll, you'll see one, two, three. Try not to mix them up. Not a whole lot of chips in here, but I will be cleaning it out. And this is the other bevel gear on one side and scroll on the other. So I will tap that out. I don't know how hard that'll be. It shouldn't be. Again, don't get any marks on it. Did you see how I used brass and lead on almost everything? But look at the chips. And how filthy that is. So there's really no way of cleaning that up other than to take it apart. Just about out. Finally, that is really a close fit. So this is the scroll. And on the other side, of course, is the bevel gear. And this other gear, smaller pinion bevel gear, I guess we could call it rides in that, and of course the chuck jaws 
ride in the scroll. You can see why a three jaw is so much more expensive than a four jaw. It's not very many parts, but very complicated parts. Okay, this all has to be cleaned up real well. This isn't too bad, but look at the chips on the table. So most of the cleaning has already taken place. Okay, I'm going to take these big pieces, carry them upstairs and put them in the wife's dishwasher. I don't think she'll mind at all. But before I do that, I will knock out the majority of these chips right now with a wire brush because the dishwasher isn't really going to knock those out of there but it will degrease it. I'll use Dawn. This is a brass brush. You know these brass brushes are so soft they don't last very long. Of course they came from the nickel store so what do you expect? And if there's any chips that are really smeared into there, galled into there, I will take Randy's poker here and knock those out. All right, the next time you see this stuff, it will be immaculate. Well, I wasted almost an hour of my time. I'm going to have to get after my wife for buying that cheap detergent at the dollar and a quarter store, but this is, so I'll finish it up here in a, in a solvent pan. This is K1 kerosene. Really cuts the grease. and clean it up real well with brushes like that and then I'll blow it off a little bit and of course similarly with the other pieces I will not bore you with too much detail on that and yet one more piece And last but not least, the truck body, chuck body itself. Need a little more of that K1. Okay, here are all the parts, clean as a whistle, ready to reassemble. But before I do, I would like to clean up the face of the chuck and the periphery a little bit with some Scotch-Brite. You don't need to see me do that. However, that will contaminate it again, so I will have to give it another quick rinse after I do that. If there are any nicks any place on the chuck, I would say do not use a file, but use a stone. Now if you created any nicks in this assembly, you want to get those out. So do that all the way around on both pieces, and then looking at it from here where the slots are, if there's any little dings, and there are a few, take a little stone like this, and stone it wherever you feel a little bit of a burr. Now I have to clean it again because I created debris and abrasive particles when I cleaned it up. Remember this is not a restoration it's just a cleaning and reassembling. Okie dokie we're just about ready to reassemble but the first thing I will do before I start to reassemble is to take my spider here, and you've seen me do this in other videos, and clean up the thread. This is homemade. You can make your own. In fact, you should do this every time you take a chuck on or off your machine. That'll remove any little particles that are in that thread. Now we're ready to put it together. Every part must be lubricated as you put it together, but be careful not to use too much oil or centrifugal force will cause it to sling out and cover your left shoulder with dirty oil. Now, in the other video, I used grease. What do you think? Grease 
or 20 or 30 weight, what would you use on these parts as you reassemble them? I think this time I'm going to use strictly oil rather than the grease. The grease does tend to attract the chips more, I think. Okay, let's start the assembly. The scroll goes down. <clears throat> Everything's got a light coat of oil on it. Now it's important to note that before we put this piece on, this little gear has to be installed in this piece, not just laid here. That's not going to work. Because you've got a hole here for that pilot. So that's how it goes. And now make sure that this meshes with this gear as you assemble it. Maybe it should be grease, I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Looks good. Now for the six screws. And I already put a drop of oil on each screw. One drop. When's the last time you saw one of these cordless screwdrivers? What did we do before lithium? And now I will tighten them quite tight using a screwdriver like this and an adjustable wrench. I have to have somebody hold that for me. Would you hold it for me? You've seen me do this lots of times. Remember that this is slot 1, slot 2, slot 3, and we have to install the correct jaw into the slot. So watch for the scroll to come around, the beginning of it, and slide number 1 in. And when you're sure it's caught and moving, Watch for it to come around in slot two. And similarly, slot three. And if you've done it correctly, just putting a little bit of oil like that. If you've done it correctly, they should all come together at the same time. How about that? Now that actually takes quite a bit of time, so that's why people are hesitant to stop what they're doing and spend an hour or more working on the chuck. Because it's unproductive time really in regards to what you're actually making. Everything's got a little film of oil on it. It moves freely, so I'm just about done. 
If you enjoyed this video, you might want to watch this short video here, What Makes It Work, number 26A, How a Scroll Chuck Works. Now that's the short version. There's also a long version. Here it is. And here's the long version, if you can take it. Well, that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.